serve an amazing God and his glory rises among us and it fills the temple. And we have a reason to worship today. So come on, let's worship together. You guys are going to know this song just a little bit different. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Yeah. Come on, sing that with me. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Praise him right where you are. He is worthy. 
to be praised every time we lift our hands and when we lift our voice and when we cry out to him. We just tell him, thank you, God. Lord, as we surrender ourselves, as we submit ourselves to you, we just worship you, Lord. Lord, you are faithful, God. So come on, let's just do that right now. Let's surrender all. We surrender all. Yeah. Come on, this song is simple. It says, love with no reservation. Not looking for perfection. So there's no need in me pretending. I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything. Deserve my full attention. Thank you, God. Nothing less than my devotion. I'll give you everything, I'll give you everything, sing, oh, oh, you can have my heart, you can have my heart, tell them, oh, 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 you can have my heart. Have my heart. Thank you, Father. To be the Lord of my emotions. Yes, God. You set me free from selfish motives. Lord, search me till there's nothing hidden. I'll give you everything. I'll give you Come on, right where you are, just give it to him. Right where you are, just surrender yourself. We submit ourselves, God, for more of who you are. More of who you are, Lord. Yes. You tell him like to say, my heart is yours forever. Yeah, Father. Can you just say that to him right now? Tell him. My heart is yours forever. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. My heart is yours forever. I surrender, Lord. My heart is yours forever. <laughs> yeah, take it, Lord. My heart is yours forever. Now, come on. If you know this, just sing it out. Tell him. Say it. If you want my heart, you got it, you got it, you got it. If you want my heart, you got it, you got it, you got it. If you want my heart, you got it, you got it. Sing, no, oh, 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 you 
can have my heart. You can have my heart. Tell them. Say no. Tell them like this, really simple, just for the next few minutes. Say, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Yes, God. I give myself away. So you can use me. Now come on, if that's your prayer, just lift your hands. Just say, life is not my own. You I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my Give yourself to him right now. Yeah. Lord, we surrender all. We surrender all. All that we are. For more of you, God. We surrender. One last time, lift your voice in. I give myself away. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Yes, God. I give myself away so you can use me. Amen. Come on, right where you are, give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you for this time of worship. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about faith, hope, and love. Amen. And the greatest of these is love. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Brandon, would you lead us in prayer? Sure. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank we you come God. to you today yes, God. for your blessing and grace and yes, mercy. Father. Lord, I just pray that everybody out in the web and here with us and everywhere around the world yes, Lord. receives you as who you are. Yes, God. Lord, I just want to say thank you for everything you've done for yes, me Father. and everybody else. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to talk about... Uh, first of all, let me say this, that the scripture asked the question, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? And the response was, is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. What is it then that we are to believe? Are we to believe that Jesus Christ existed? Of course. 
are we to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins? Of course. Are we to believe that Jesus rose from the grave? Of course. That he is the son of the living God? Of course. That he is God manifest in the flesh? Yes. But what is it about becoming saved and becoming born again that is encapsulated in that word, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. The only place that we can find the explanation and the answer to this is in the teachings of the apostles. Because Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, he spent 40 days and 40 nights with the apostles, teaching them and showing them everything that he did and that he taught and breaking it down and giving them the spiritual meaning and the right interpretation of the scriptures, right? If anyone is called of God that we really know, it's the apostles. We know they are called, right? Somebody can say, I'm the chief apostle. Well, okay, maybe you are, maybe you aren't. But when Paul says, I am an apostle to the Gentiles, we know that. That's absolutely true, amen, because God called him to be an apostle. And it is written in the word of God, which is canonized, and which is regarded as being inspired by God. The scripture says, holy men of God were moved on by the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, and wrote these things down. And that word inspired means theonoustos. That's the Greek word for all scripture is given by inspiration. Theonoustos. That means God breathed out. Just like my words that I'm saying right now, my words are being breathed out. Your words are being breathed out. Your breath goes through your vocal cords and makes a sound, and your tongue and all of that and your brain organizes that sound into words. And so we are breathing out our words, and that's just the way God is, because we are made in his image. When God said, let there be light, he breathed out that word. And his breath, unlike our breath, creates. His breath is the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's his Amen. breath. Amen. And so when he breathes out and says, let there be light, there's light. And there was light. Amen. And so we're going to talk about God breathing on his apostles. And the reason why I am really a stickler on, on focusing on this is because the mainstream church, so-called mainstream church, doesn't really focus on the teachings of the apostles that is recorded in the book of Acts. Amen. This is the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the apostles in the book of Acts. And Peter said, when they asked him, what shall we do to be saved? What was Peter's response? Was it, well, simply believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, accept him as your personal Savior, and you're in. Is that what he said? No. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, the remission of sins. Amen? Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which they were seeing and hearing in Jerusalem when God poured his spirit out on that up in that upper room on 120, and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance, and he said, this promise is unto you. Repent, be water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, 
and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. That's the Gentiles, right? Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's down through the centuries. Every single believer is commanded to be water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Why is that so critical? Because Jesus gave the apostles the right interpretation of the scriptures of salvation. Such a critical thing as salvation should not be handled carelessly or lightly, right? And so God is not going to handle it carelessly or lightly. So he put it on his apostles to teach them to observe all things, he said, whatsoever I commanded you. Now, here's the, here's the issue. We can see that Jesus was telling his apostles in 2819, Matthew 2819, Go ye therefore in all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Who is he talking to? He was speaking to the eleven, the context of the scripture says. He was not speaking to us down the centuries in that particular portion of scripture because he was giving the apostles the interpretation and the understanding of what being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost really was. That's why Peter, when he they said, what shall we do? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why did he say the name of Jesus Christ rather than say the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? Because encapsulated in that name, Jehovah, my Savior, that's what Jesus means, is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That means when we get water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, we are not neglecting the Father or the Holy Spirit. We are, in fact, worshiping them because the Bible says whatsoever you do in Colossians, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for what? To give glory unto God the Father. Amen. Right? So it is important for us to study the Word of God. As I said earlier off camera, Paul says you have many instructors in Christ, but you only you do not have many fathers. He says, I am your father in the gospel. In fact, he made a particular point of uh, uh, describing Timothy as his son in the gospel. My son, Timothy, he said. And we'll search all this stuff out. But these are, this is, I'm just laying the groundwork for what we're going to cover. Because these are things that, that stir my heart. And when I pray and ask God, God, I want you to just lay upon my heart those things that you want me to say. God spoke to me many years ago and said, I have called you to be a prophetic, not pathetic, <laughs> prophetic, <laughs> prophetic uh, minister that is of prepared spontaneity. A prepared, spontaneous, prophetic minister. What's that mean? It means that in studying the Word of God through the week, through the month or reading whatever uh, God puts in front of me gets deposited in my heart where Jesus dwells, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, when you have the Holy Spirit, and we're going to talk about who the Holy Spirit is and what his name is, right? Mm -hmm. The name of the Father and of the Son the and Ghost. of the Holy Spirit was interpreted by the Apostle Peter and later on by Paul and the rest of the Apostles as being Jesus. Right? He baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ, which signifies that the 40 days and 40 nights that they spent with him, him expounding on the Scriptures, opening their understanding, it signifies that the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Spirit is that one name, which is Jesus. 
Now, here's the, here's the deal. Paul said this, that in the past, I looked upon all men in the natural, in the flesh. In fact, one time, at one time, I looked at Jesus in the flesh. But I do not look or consider men in the flesh anymore, but in the spirit. I even look at Jesus now in the spirit. What happened to Jesus when he ascended into heaven? He ascended at the right hand the of the Father, right? <laughs> There's so much. Because here's, here's why this is important. There's not a compartment where, okay, Holy Spirit, that's your name. Holy Spirit, some people call them, his name is Holy Spirit. No, that's who he is. His name is Jesus. Right? Yeah. Okay, so the name of the Holy Spirit is Jesus. Now, the Holy Spirit is here in my heart. Jesus is up there at the right hand of the Father. That means the Holy Spirit is not really connected with Jesus because he's with the Father and the Father's up there. So I have the Holy Spirit and he's a person and Jesus is a person and the Father is another person. So the, the Holy Spirit is not it, it's a person. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. What does the scripture say as to who dwells in us? Paul said in Ephesians, there's one Lord, one faith, one God and Father of all who is above all, through all, and in you all. That means I've got the Father in me. Amen. I've got the Son in me. I've got the Holy Spirit in me. What does that mean when we're thinking about Him spiritually? Are we seeing a natural body of Christ in us, of Jesus? Are we seeing a natural person of the Father in us? Are there three persons inside of our heart or one these three are one it's the, Trinity. it's the triune God but when they when they have have expressed this word Trinity they have broke it down in compartment and said it put it in compartments this is one person, so this is another. Yes, because it takes away from the fact that God himself, the almighty God, is a spirit. There's, there's no other spirit. There's only one spirit. That's the Father, right? Right? Yes. He gave birth to a son, right, who had a body. He was 100% God. 100% man. Now the man Christ Jesus got hungry. God don't get hungry. He got tired. God don't get tired. But the Son of God got tired. The Son of God got hungry. Christ. Doesn't It doesn't say God the Son. But men say that. Right? Now here's the reason why there should be a breakdown here. The Son of God is the sacrifice. The Son of God is the last Adam. To show us. The Son of God is the firstborn among many brethren. Yeah. He said when he rose from the grave, Go unto my brethren and tell them that I go unto my God and their God. This is Jesus talking. My Father and their Father. Amen? My Lord and their Lord. He's calling us brothers, right? In that concept, we understand that Jesus is our brother, right? That's absolutely scriptural. That's absolutely true, and it's verified. But Thomas, when he saw him, he fell down and worshipped him and said, My Lord and my God. How many gods are there? One God. Great is the mystery, Paul said, of godliness. God. God. 
Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, if we understand this spiritually, we get it. One God and Father of all, who's above all, through all, and in us all. The Father is a spirit. The Son of God is his word. Think. The word was made flesh. What word? The word that God breathes out. The word was made flesh. God said in the Old Testament, he said, I will send forth my word as the snow and rain that falls to the earth, and it shall not return unto me void. And he sent his word, and his word became flesh. We're perceiving him spiritually, not carnally. If we perceive him carnally, we've got him compartment, compartmentized. Can you say the compartmentalized? I can't say that. <laughs> oh, you can't either. I'm not gonna try. <laughs> so, but I mean, okay, you got him. You got the compartment of God as the Father, one person. God as the Son, another person, and God as the Holy Ghost, another person. Man, that's confusing. I don't understand that. Well, you got to accept that by faith. Okay. That's what they tell us. Yeah. Accept it by faith, right? Yes. But God is not three persons. He's only one person with three aspects or manifestations of that one person. God is a spirit. He sent forth his word that came out of his spirit. One God, one God. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Spirit and truth. Who's the truth? Jesus is the truth. The Son of God. The expression. The Holy Spirit is a Holy Spirit that hovered over the earth. But nothing, nothing was accomplished until the Word came. The Word is God's, is the extension and expression of the heart of God. I'm not even getting into this here. The heart of God. And so we, we see that the in the beginning was the Word, John says, and the Word was with God, right? And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. By who? By the word, right? The word of God. Now was God's word another person? Is your word another person? <laughs> or did it come from the one person that you are? You're made in God's image, right? So you're one person. Right? You're not three. If you were if you were made in God's image and if God was three persons, we would be schizophrenic. We'd be three people, we'd be three yeah, persons, yeah, right? Yeah. Now look, God's person, one person, one person, the spirit of the living God, whose whose name is identified as Elohim. Now Elohim was borrowed from, the, the writers put Elohim in the scripture that was borrowed from the pagan nations that meant many gods, right? Many gods, they worship many gods, Elohim, right? So it's confusing when they say, let us make man in our image after our likeness. See, there's the Trinity right there. Right? Well, let's examine that. Right? Oh, no, no, you can't examine it. You have to accept it by faith. Oh, no, my Bible says to, 
to uh, try every spirit to see whether it's of God or not, to examine everything I hear out there with the Word of God that ultimately comes in here. And the Holy Spirit of God in here said He would bring all things to my remembrance whatsoever He has said unto me, and His anointing would teach me of all things. So that's what I'm going to trust in. I'm not going to trust in your commentary unless your commentary lines up with the anointed Word of God. Yes. That, right? And so that's where that's where my heart is. That's that's where my my ministry is. That's where the focus of what God wants me to say is. Everybody has a different task and different uh, ministry. Your ministry is evangelistic, and at this point in your life, and you are to reach as many people with the gospel as you can and bring them here yes. you're the one that will cause our church to grow yes. just a fact that's that's a big responsibility but it's not you it's the grace of God that's in you yes. mightily Amen. and you're gonna see miracles you're gonna see signs and wonders as you're talking to people and they're they're they've got sickness they've got trouble you're going to lay hands on them and you're going to say in the name of Jesus within the name of Jesus is all of the compound names of the Old Testament revelation of Jehovah he's your provider he's your banner he's your savior he's your healer he's your deliverer and so when you pronounce the name of Jesus over them that encapsulate all of who God is <laughs> And when they put their faith in the name of Jesus, that's their focus. Bam, they're healed. They're delivered. Because the name of Jesus is powerful. And you know what God said? How, how great and how grand and how powerful and how holy the name of Jesus is? He said, I exalt my word above all my name. You know why you're going to remember this? You don't even have to worry about it because the Holy Spirit in you has put it in different categories. And when you start talking, when you open your mouth, you may not know exactly what you're going to say, but you're going to have a starting point. And when you open your mouth, it's going to flow out of you like a river of living water. <laughs> and they're going to drink. And they're going to say, Man, I don't know what happened to Brandon, but when he speaks, it's like Jesus is talking to me. Mm. So that's the point. Now, here we go. In Matthew or John chapter 14, 16 through 18, I'm going to verify what I've said. I will pray the Father, Jesus talking. Remember, he's not yet crucified, he's not yet ascended. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. That means they are, they, they've got a comforter. He's going to give you another comforter. Who was the comforter that they had? Jesus. John 14, 16 through 18. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you, how long? Forever. Forever. Even the Spirit of truth the spirit of truth. Jesus said, when Philip said, show us the Father, and he'll satisfy us. Jesus said right before that. In fact, why don't you turn there and read. You got it. Start reading from uh, verse 1, would you? Oh. Well, of John. Oh, I thought you were. No, I'll be there in just a second. I'll learn this. I thought you were there. No, I'm not, but I will be. John 14, 1, he, uh, Brandon's going to read from. If I can get there. You can. Amen. Hey, nobody's in a hurry here. I can't. Oh, there's so little. <laughs> oh, you got <laughs> them? <laughs> Maybe you need two pairs. Uh, I know, right? Let me find it. I'll find it. Oh, this is a nice Bible. Well, thank you, sir. Oh, you got your name put on it. Oh, it's one of mine that I got. From, from uh, your grandpa? Yeah. I love that guy. Are you listening, Grandpa? Hi, Grandpa. Amen. Chaplain Don Rice. 
What a beautiful man of God. See what time about? Wilson? Yeah, here it is. Matthew. Start reading verse number one. John 14, 1. <clears throat> Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believed in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Okay, stop right there. Hold it right there. He said, in my father's house. What is his father's house according to the teachings of the scriptures? Now, we have heard, and it's been passed on from generation to generation, Ah, Jesus has gone to prepare a place for me. Man, I've got a mansion prepared for me in glory. I'm going to walk on streets of gold. I'm going to live in a mansion forever. Wait a minute. Is that what the scripture says that the Father's house is? Father's house. In my Father's house. Mm. Think about it. Would it be inside us? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, we, we are. Yeah, we are. We are the church of God, right? The house of God, right? We are the Father's house, right? The church. Yes. So, in my Father's house are many mansions or grand dwelling places, right? In my Father's house, right. I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. He said in another place. It's expedient that I go because if I don't go, the Comforter cannot come. But if I go, my Father will send the Comforter to you, another Comforter, right? And so let's find out what the Scripture says about who the Comforter is, the Scriptures. He said, if you believe on me as the Scripture had said in John 7:37. Out of your innermost being, your belly, shall flow rivers of living water. That's believing on him, mm -hmm. not as religious uh, doctrine has said, unless it aligns with the word of God. Not as Matthew Henry's commentary says, unless what you're reading is in alignment with the right interpretation of the apostles' teaching. Right? Everything, everything that we hear outside we have to verify because Jesus said this many false teachers have gone out into the world more so in the latter days he said there'll be those that'll say I'm Christ I'm Christ he says don't believe them what does that mean there Christ means the anointed one I've got the anointing no no I've got the anointing he said and Paul said uh, uh, Jesus said, don't believe them, right? Because the same anointing that abides on me and upon the apostles also abides in those who submit themselves under the teachings of the apostles because the teachings of the apostles are the teachings of Jesus Christ. Hence, we believe on him as the scripture has said, and he says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. What do we believe? We believe the apostles' teaching. From the scriptures. From the scriptures. Yes. And then we what? Submit to it and obey it. When Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
for the promise is unto you. Now, Jesus said, go into the upper room, wait for the promise of the Father. This is that which Joel spoke in the Old Testament. It's a prophetic promise of God. In fact, spiritually speaking, it is the promised land, the promise of the Father, right? Oh, hallelujah, there's so much here. When they came out of Egypt, they were saved from Egypt. But they had to continue to follow Moses through the Red Sea, which was a, a type of water baptism. As they went through the Red Sea, the, the, they followed them. The Red Sea closed on their enemies mm -hmm. and cut away their past, circumcised. Okay. When we're water baptized, we go through our Red Sea. <laughs> and the waters, the waters bury the old Brandon. The waters bury the old Fred. Well, we stand in water. He says, he that is born again stands in water and in blood. Right? We're standing in water. Right? In, picture this. You're in, you're in the baptismal tank. Okay. You're standing in water. Yeah. The old Brandon is buried. He's gone. He's cut away. He's circumcised, boom. God circumcised your heart, took him out. Took him out. Right. You're, you're dripping wet with water, but you're also dripping wet with blood. How are we born in the natural? Water and blood. When we come out, the baby comes out covered in water and blood. <laughs> it's all over the place. It's everywhere. I do too. I do too. It's coming. All over my body. But we're covered in water and blood, so we're born of the water. Jesus said, He that he says, you, You've got to be born of the water and of the spirit. So you're born of the water in baptism. How are you born? You're made a new creation in Christ Jesus. And then what? You're a temple of the Holy Ghost. Then what? God wants to fill the temple. And he did. <laughs> like, would, would you would you tell them what happened to you? What part? <laughs> of uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, a couple days ago, uh, I was researching online about receiving my heavenly language. And it popped up online of Pastor Matt Todd preaching about how to receive that. Well, like I said, at 3.45 in the morning... Uh, it came out of me that I received my heavenly language. That I speak in tongues now. <laughs> Crying and snotting everywhere. Oh, glory to God. It came over me that I never thought it would. It came right out of my belly, like the pastor talks about. The words of God will come out of your belly, your gut, to fill everybody out there with the love and compassion and grace and mercy of his spirit to you. That's my story. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm getting blessed more and more every day since that day. <clears throat> when you receive it, you'll understand. Until then, I can't explain it more. It's just came over me. So, there you go, Pastor. The scripture calls it joy unspeakable uh, yeah, I, and full of glory. I can't explain. I can't. That's, I wish that's I could. What, that's what every one of us say. It's not like anything that we've experienced in Sh life. Start shaking and sweating. It's just wonderful. It's wonderful. Mm. So it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. I, well, I was ba I received Jesus Christ not too long ago. I was baptized, and that was it. I wow. thought. Yeah, water baptism. Pastor says that I will receive the Holy Ghost in time. Well, what September I got baptized, and now it's January, uh, and I received the Holy Ghost. So it took a minute, but God, God put me where He wanted me at that time. My God, thank you, Father. Not, not it's not your time, not when you want it. It's when God wants you to have it. Come on. So don't, don't force that decision as fleshly ways mm -hmm. follow 
the scriptures, read the scriptures. Christ and God will fill you with everything that you imagine. Plus, you will have the happiness and comfort of God when you follow the word. Listen to the pastor. Listen to somebody that wants to preach the word to you. Hey Amen. Let me. Let me sorry, Pastor. No, no, no. Don't. No, don't be sorry. I would let you continue. Go ahead. Uh, when I'm finished. No, no, no. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now, even the Spirit of Truth, right? We know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He told Philip, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." So let me say that again. Jesus said to Philip, "I am the way." I am the truth, amen, and I am the life. The law came by Moses, or the law was sent by Moses, but truth and grace came by Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So let's lock that in. Okay, Jesus, you're the truth. Okay, now he says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. If Jesus is the truth, which he is, then that spirit of truth is Jesus. Amen. The comforter. Now, whom the world cannot receive because it doesn't see him. Neither does the world know him, but you know him, for he dwells with you. Who's dwelling with them at that time? Jesus, who was the truth. And he said the spirit of truth, the comforter, is going to come and shall be in you. And then he qualifies it. I will not, I, the truth. I, Jesus, will not leave you comfortless. Amen. I will come to you. I will come to you. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The Spirit of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. His name is Jesus. It's not Holy Spirit. That's who He is. He is the Holy Spirit. His name is Jesus. Oh. Amen. The Spirit of wisdom and revelation be upon all you who have an honest, seeking heart, who are humble before God and willing to receive the Word of God Amen. Even though it breaks your tradition. Jesus said to them, your tradition is causing people to disobey the commandments of God. Amen. 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 It, Pastor. Hallelujah. So, John 14, 19. Yet a little while in the world seeth me no more, but you see me. Because I live, you shall live also. I'll be in you. <laughs> Amen. He told him in, in uh, Matthew, at the end of Matthew, he said, Lo, I am, I am with you always. I will never leave you. Amen. John 14, 20. At that time you shall know. Now here's so key. You shall know that I am in my Father. And you in me and I in you. In what day? In the day, on the day of Pentecost. That was the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out. Mm -hmm. And forward. From the day of Pentecost and forward. So he said, in that day, you shall know that I am in the Father. And you with me. Who is he? He's the word of God that's in the Father, who is a spirit. Yeah. 
listen, listen, listen. You, you can't let the traditions of men interpret the scriptures for you when Jesus himself says, I've given you an anointing so that you're not deceived. The same anointing that's upon Jesus, upon the apostles, and upon his word. When you read it and hear it, it's like, whew, yeah. That's cool, clear <laughs> I get water. it. I it's get cool it. Cool water through your body. Yeah. So, so we're talking about, and, and Brandon, God is not only speaking this word to us, he's speaking it to hundreds. I, I don't know how many are out there, thousands that are listening. More, hundreds of Amen. thousands. I know I'm getting hundreds of feedback, hundreds of people writing me back. Those hundreds of people, those people are spreading the word to more people. Yeah. And that's amazing. Yeah. Just like we are. Yes. Amen. And I'm 40, I've been serving God 47 years. I've been doing it uh, for a few months. <laughs> okay, let's look at it this way. Sure. We're eternal. We're, e we're eternal. Yeah. We're, we're not in a time frame. Nope. So our beginning, I won't go there yet. Please do. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is he that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved to my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself, myself to him. Right? Is he manifesting himself to us by showing us he is the comforter, he is the spirit of truth, he is the Holy Ghost? Amen. Mm -mm -mm. And the scripture says in another place that God has filled, given the baptism of the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. When you, you obeyed him in repenting and getting water baptized and following him, and bam, he's given you the promise. God cannot lie. No. He will keep his promise. Okay, here we go. You, are, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have ordained you. Now take that personal. God has chosen me. Say, put your hand on your heart out there. Say this with me. God has chosen God me. God has chosen me. I didn't choose him. I didn't choose him. Until after he chose me. Until after he chose me. He has ordained me. He has ordained me. He has ordained me. He has ordained me. I don't need man to ordain me. I don't need man's confirmation either. Well, we, we do in a sense. That yes. we'll get it, that, that's another subject. But, uh, but ordained confirmation, we don't need man to ordain us. There we go, yes. I, but I, God I, uses men to confirm that ordination. We are chosen of him. I am chosen of him. I'm chosen of him. doesn't matter what the world says. Well, you know what? I reject you. I don't choose you. Oh, it doesn't matter. He chose me. My new thing. I don't care. He chose you. Yes. We're chosen. We're the we're the chosen of the the chosen that are that are on television right now. That happened two thousand some years ago. We are the chosen of twenty twenty two. We are the chosen of our generation. In my age, I am passing what I have been given by Jesus unto you. The torch. Amen. That's Amen. That's so, so uh, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit. The fruit are souls. And that your fruit should remain. That whosoever or that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he, now notice this, he may give it to you. That means what I said earlier, when you're out there among the lost and you are ministering and, and people are getting healed and God's given you uh, words, he said that you can, in that time, you can ask and he'll give it to you. Jesus said, Father, I'm praying this because I know you always hear me, but Lord, I'm not praying this for myself. 
I'm praying this for those around me so that they would believe. Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> God raised him from the dead. And he said, the works that I do, if you believe on me, if you believe in my name, he said, the works that I do shall you do also. Peter believed in his name and said, silver and gold have I none to the lame man. Forty years laid there at the temple. Peter and John walked into the temple in the hour of prayer. Silver and gold have I none. You're looking for money? I don't have any money. But what I do have, I give you. Now, notice what he said. He did not say, in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Ghost, rise up and walk. He did not say that. Right. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, because within the name of Jesus Christ, again, is encapsulated all of the Godhead. The fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the Father is a spirit. He does not have a right side. He dwells everywhere. There is no right side to God. There's no left side to God. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Now, because now what we're doing is we're, we're looking at the Godhead spiritually, not physically or carnally. If we look at it carnally, we're going to see the Father as one person sitting on the throne. And we're going to see His Son as another person sitting at His right side. But if we see it spiritually, like He intends, we're going to see God is a spirit. And He said, by my right arm will I bring salvation. He makes bare his holy arm, the scripture says, and he reaches and brings salvation. Who is his arm? Jesus Christ. Jesus. What arm is it? It's the right arm. The arm's attached. The arm is not another person. <laughs> the, the arm is not another person, guys. The arm is attached to the person of God. God doesn't have two bodies. He's got one. That's the body of Christ, the express image of the invisible God. And we're part of the body of Christ. And we're <laughs> seated, seated with him. Oh, we are seated with him now. We have, he says, we are raised up when Christ ascended. Now we, we partook of his death, repented. We partook of his burial, Right? Baptized. Yes, yes. Buried with him in baptism. Mm -hmm. And he says, and now we're partaker of his resurrection. He has raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. We are his arm. We are his extension. By his right arm, he will bring salvation to this corrupt, dark, miserable, painful world. And he's going to do it through each one of us, doing our part. I'm doing my part now, right now. You're doing your part right now. Uh, warfare is when the Spirit of God and the Word of God pulls down strongholds and takes the place of error in our heart right now you and I are in warfare we are hearing the word of our shepherd he's made us to lay down right now in green pastures green pastures is the is what sheep eat we eat the word of God we're seated in right now we're resting we're resting and we're hearing the word of God and that word of God is truth and the anointing is putting it in place of where we once had error. He's building strongholds of truth in our mind, in our heart, giving us the right interpretation, the right uh, 
view of him spiritually. That's warfare. He's fighting our battles right now. The word of God. Fighting which is sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper than any misconception we have in our mind. And it's mm -hmm. alive. <laughs> and it's powerful. Very powerful. Okay, let me continue. Sure. We're almost done because I'm, I'm feeling kind of like you're getting full. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I don't know if you're full out there or not. I'm but not full. Never. Well, that, you well, keep on preaching. Man. I don't want to over, over water or overfeed. Okay. These things I command you that you love, 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 love one another. Love one another. Don't be envious. Don't be contentious. Don't fight. Love one another, even as I have loved you, he said in another place. But when the Comforter is come, now we understand who the Comforter is, the Spirit of Truth, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Didn't he just say the Father would send it unto you? Huh? I will send it unto you from the Father, from the Spirit of the Almighty Jehovah God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right? Okay. Whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, there it is again, which proceedeth from the Father. He, the Spirit of truth, will testify of me. Remember what I said about the Spirit? The Spirit just hovers, but nothing happens until the Word is expressed. Right? Keep that in mind. So that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is dwelling in us. The resurrection life, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the body from the dead, dwells in us, right? Okay. So, John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. <clears throat> and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Of sin, because they don't believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more in the natural. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judge. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot receive them now, or bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into what? Truth. All truth. All truth. All truth. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Okay, think about the Spirit of God hovering, right? Hovering. Okay. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hears, he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you, the word. The Holy Spirit of God, in other words, will bring all things to our remembrance, he says in another place. He will bring the word of God, and it will be just like it was when he created the world. You're, you and I, and I have been sent to people that are in darkness. It's like when, the, when God in the beginning created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Right now, those who are not in Christ are without form, and darkness is on the face of the deepness of their heart. The heart is as deep water, as the Bible said. And so there's darkness upon the face of the deep of their heart, of the waters of their heart. Now, I'll close with this. This is, this is a prophetic word for you and for all those who are called to reach out and, and bring salvation to those who are in darkness. You and I, we have power. 
-hmm. We have authority. It's the same God who raised Christ from the dead. Paul said, if, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, it will also make your bodies alive. Amen. Okay? And so the same spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the, the spirit that hovered over the darkness, over the deep, over the void expanse of the world, of the earth, said, let there be light. And there was a creation that took place. And you and I will go to them who are in darkness. The waters of their heart are dark. And the Spirit of God will send us to them. And the Spirit of God, this is prophetic, will hover over that, that their heart and you will give them the word of the Lord and God will create it in there. And the light will divide the, the darkness. Right after God created, it's all in Genesis, it's been said, and it is. And we're uh, he said, let there be light and there was light and God divided the light from the darkness. He didn't mix it. It didn't turn gray. <laughs> see their hearts as darkness see their heart as the, the waters the Bible says that the heart of man is as deep waters so you're going to be sent and you're going to see people and God's going to bring this word back to you you don't have to memorize well memorize it, get it down in your heart but God will bring it back to you by his Holy Spirit. You know, say, okay, here they are. These hearts are dark. When you first came, darkness was over your heart. When I first, when oh. God first came to me, I was as dark waters. But then the preaching of the word came. It wasn't just the Spirit. It wasn't just the Spirit. It was the Spirit and the word spirit and truth hit me like a ton of bricks the bible says by spirit and truth iniquity is purged yes. spirit and truth let us make man in our image after our likeness spirit and truth oh. let that settle that's a lot it's a lot just let it settle god has watered some seed in all of you out there, he's watered some of your seed, some of the seed that's already been planted, and he's planted more seed. So just receive it. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your spirit, which is the comforter, which is the spirit of truth, the spirit of Jesus. His name is Jesus. The Holy Spirit's name is is Jesus. Hallelujah. And so the Holy Spirit of God dwells in us, Lord. You said to let the Word of God dwell in our hearts richly so that when you move on those places, those people that are sick, even among your own people, that you will bring a Word to our remembrance and we will speak it and you will confirm your word with signs following, not signs leading, signs following. And we ask you, God, to just plant this word deep, deep, deep into our hearts. We receive it. Say this word after me, everybody out there. If you really believe that God is speaking to you, say, I receive this. I receive this. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <coughs> For those of you who have not given your heart to the Lord, but you feel drawn by the Spirit of God, I want to ask you right now, 
to just open your heart to God. Open your heart to the God who created you. And say, God, I believe that you are real. God, I believe that you sent forth Jesus Christ, your word that became flesh. I believe that Jesus Christ took my sin. I believe that Jesus Christ took my judgment, my punishment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh yeah, I see many of you crying in the spirit. I know, I just perceive that. You are crying because your heart is, is, is being overwhelmed with God's love for you. He loves you so very much. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Paul was a murderer and God forgave him and crucified his old nature that committed the murder. And he was buried in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost and wrote a greater part of the New Testament by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So God will forgive you. Just let it go. Let it go. He carried it on the cross. He carried all of your sin, all of your sin on the cross. Before you were born, He, he took it. And he forgave you. Now receive that forgiveness. Say, I receive your forgiveness, Lord. I receive your forgiveness for all these things that I confess to you. I believe now that you have been knocking at the door by heart and I've opened the door. And I believe you've come in. Grant me godly sorrow. that I might repent for godly sorrow leads us to repentance. Your kindness leads us to repentance. Not just an intellectual confession, but a heart confession. For you said, Lord, if we believe in our heart, we shall be saved. Now thank you, Lord, for saving us. You have saved us from sin. You've saved us from darkness. You've saved us from the control of the, of the enemy of Satan. We are free. And now we go to the waters of baptism in Jesus' name, even as they were free from Egypt and went through the Red Sea. We go to the waters of baptism, the grave where the old man, the old woman, is buried in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. For the remission of sins. Amen. Because you have done this, hallelujah, I am rejoicing with you. Angels in heaven are rejoicing with you. I, I would that you would give me a comment, give me a call. 734-773- nine three three four but even if you don't call me tell somebody what god has done for you open your mouth and god will fill it amen preach the gospel to the whole earth preach it let god use you in jesus name amen amen <coughs> let me let me read one last thing then jesus said to them again, peace. It's uh, 20, John 20, 21. Then Jesus said to them, peace be unto you as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. Mm -mm -mm. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. Picture that. Envision that. He's talking to his apostles and he, 
His breath is the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them and said unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. And they were on the day of Pentecost, they were sitting in that upper room and there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, breath. That wind is translated breath. And, it, and uh, cloven tongues like as a fire that sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So as he breathed on them, he was showing them that the Holy Ghost was his breath. The rushing mighty wind was his breath. Now, he said to the apostles, he didn't say this to the entire church because it was up to the ministry of the chosen apostles to promote the gospel, right? Because when Peter said this, they that gladly received his word were baptized both men and women and they, they uh, remained under the apostles teaching right they they submitted to the apostles teaching and so he's talking to the apostles you can verify this Whoso, he, whosoever sins you remit talking to the apostles remit notice that word remission be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins whosoever sins you remit they are remitted right unto them and whosoever sins you retain they are retained that's Jesus telling his apostles this who Jesus cannot lie this is forever settled in heaven and in earth this is absolute truth that cannot be changed or altered how do they remit their sins and they get baptized for the remission of sins <laughs> A lot of sense. And, and now see we have to be told this by the anointing right. that's in me yes. the anointing. we have to be told this so that we could receive it and now the, the scripture says and, and it said it to me too and I didn't get into faith, hope and love I will uh, hopefully soon uh, in, in Isaiah it says I think it's chapter at the end of chapter 55 54 or 55 he said surely they will gather together against you but not by me whosoever shall gather against you shall fall for your sake he said no weapon formed against you shall prosper I have created the waster to destroy, he said. I have the devil on a leash. Nobody, nobody can hurt you unless God allows it for his purpose and glory. And as we trust in him, nothing can touch us, the inner man. Nothing can hurt us. Hurt our body, yes. I experienced that. You're going to, it's going to be opposition come. Yeah. There will be opposition come. Because the truth is going to stir up who? Satan. Who crucified Jesus? The Romans. Roman priests. At, at whose request? Mm. Crucify who was saying? By the people? The religious people. Yeah, yeah. By, by all, yeah. The religious people. It's not change. It's not change. The religious are in the flesh. Yeah. He said, whosoever attacks you will think that they're doing God's service. Jesus said that. Read, read uh, uh, chapter 13, 14, 15. Just absorb all that. 13, he says, they who attack you will think that they're doing God's service. And they did, didn't they? Didn't Paul think he was doing God's service when he was hauling Christians to prison? Killing them? He thought he was doing what God wanted him to do, religion. Religion gets in the way of... But reli oh, religion oh, is... Gets in the way of 
us worshiping the Lord. Yeah, it's a tradition of men. Yeah. It's believing something that the scripture has not said. It's a perversion. How did Jesus convince Eve to partake of that fruit? He perverted the word. You shall not die. He perverted it. So it's the same thing. It's a, serpent. it's a religion. Just as real as we are filled with light, we are children of light, salt of the earth, light of the world, there is our children of darkness. And they're, they're not really aware. They're deceived. They think their religion, they're lost. They're going to stand up for their religion, so they're going to attack anyone who comes with a word that's different from what they want you to say at that meeting. The truth. Speak the truth and love my brother and take the flack. Don't fight back. God will defend you. Yes. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Amen. You know why we're growing slowly? Because God died. God's been waiting for you. God is <laughs> calling you. And this is not just for this church. But God is calling all the children of him to come out and, and fight. Yes. They want God wants us to fight for him, to share his word to other people, no matter what. Yeah. And what's our fight? To share the word of God against Satan. And then what do we fight? How do we fight? By speaking the truth. Speaking the truth, but then when opposition comes, how do we fight? How do we fight? When opposition comes, right? do we argue? No. We fight the good fight of faith. We sit and we pray. We pray. We pray. And we believe what God showed us, what God's told us. It's faith. Faith. That's what it speaks in here. Fight faith. the good fight of faith, he told Timothy. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Take the whole armor of God, shield of faith, quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. They're going to say things, and you're just going to take your shield and quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And then you have the sword of the Spirit, not the sword of... Brandon's spirit. No, so God's the spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy right? Spirit. God. Jesus Which is Christ. the word of God. So we don't pull that out of our sheath until God tells us to. And we don't we don't strike it at everything. We strike it where God and say that which God says to say. That takes practice and it takes growth. He who is skillful in the Word of God, handling the Word of God skillfully. It's like learning to play guitar. Mm -hmm. You get skillful at handling the Word of God. That's why, that's why this morning, all of this that I have said is a, is a, uh, a development of what God has brought me to for 47 years. It's taken 47 years for me to come to this place and bring this word in this fashion. I brought this word before. He is fine-tuned. But this has been a fine-tuned word this morning. Yes. Yes. Skillful. Yes. Skillful. And you're going to get skillful as you as you engage, as, as you practice. Exercise. Exercise. Yes. Exercise. Do it. Say it. Don't let nobody shut you up. Nobody I don't care who it is that tells you to shut up. Say, no, nope, I don't listen to you. I listen to God. My father. In <laughs> my heaven. father. I listen to my father in heaven. Amen. Yeah. That's what Paul said, or Peter rather. Peter saw the lame man, silver and gold have I done, such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. His faith was in that name. When he heard the name of Jesus, he believed. And he rose up and walked, and strength came into his ankle bones. And he shouted, and he danced, and he leaped for joy, the Bible says, and they went into the temple. Then the crowds of people came, and they said, oh, my God, we have just witnessed, we've seen this man for 40 years. All my life he's been there. 
And Peter said, why are you looking at us as though by some great holiness that we have, this man is standing before you all? He said, it's through faith, even his faith, in the name of Jesus Christ that has made him whole. And here comes the religious. They come and grab him and try to shut him up. And they spent the night in jail. And uh, Bail Baylor got saved. No, not that not one. That not one. that one. Okay. This is in the 16th chapter oh, that okay. we're talking about. This one here is in the, in the third chapter, four, third or fourth, third. Okay. And so, so uh, uh, there they are. He's preaching to the multitudes. This guy's just been healed. It's verified. They're ready to give their heart to the Lord because of that. Mm -hmm. And he's telling them it's not it's not of our own holiness. It's not it's not who we are. It's who he is. It's the name of Jesus by the grace of God. He's made this man whole that you're now witnessing. Will the religious come and take him, throw him in jail overnight, talking about what are we going to do to these guys? We've got to shut them up somehow. They're causing people to come to them. And that's when the devil stirs up. Whenever there's people that are really coming and being snatched from his, his kingdom, snatched from darkness, being translated into light, that's when the devil gets stirred up and he uses religious people. People closest to us sometimes will be our enemies, Jesus said. Not enemies in, in terms of uh, natural enemies, but it will be Satan using them. And so they stood them in the midst of what's called the Sanhedrin. That's 70 of these religious things, full of pride, full of religion, thinking they're doing God's service. They threatened them. First thing they did was threaten them and said, do not preach or teach or speak in the name of, of this name anymore. And Peter said to, to all of these religious uh, bigwigs, well, you judge for yourself. Shall we listen to you or shall we listen to God? <laughs> all right. yeah. The boldness. And when they saw the boldness of Peter, knowing that they were unlearned and ignorant to the law, to, to these things that they believed, uh, took note that they had been with Jesus. <laughs> and they released him. They just threatened him and released him. The next time they beat him and ultimately were going to uh, execute him, 12th chapter of Acts. And then beat him again in the 16th chapter of Acts where the jailer was saved. Right, there we go. Yes. And then ultimately, they were martyred. But you know what? 2021, the gospel is all over the world. And there are millions already, billions already in heaven making up a great cloud of witnesses. And they're cheering us on. Yeah. Yeah, go, go, go. Hallelujah, mm. hallelujah. Do you feel it? Not yeah, only hear it, I, we can feel it. Every day is stronger and stronger for me. Now, be patient with your growth. I am. Be patient. Just... But walk, walk, walk in today. Walk in today. Let God use you with what you have today. He won't put any more or allow any more to come on you than you can bear. He won't. He'll take care Let's of you. that 100%. But they're going to try to shut you up. They, honestly, and it's going to hurt. It's not going to hurt. It will hurt. Of course. Rejection hurts. But take it. Just take it. Just take it. Say, okay. It, you told me it was going to happen, so it's happened. Now you, you take care of them, God. Don't hate them. Love them. Love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Amen, brother. I put this into practice, man, and it works. It's powerful, and it works. I but I, it's it's the grace of God. I got something good to tell you in a little while. Go ahead. I'm done. Later. Uh, we'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this session. Uh, we'll meet again for Table Talk next Thursday. In the meantime, we will uh, see you again next Sunday. 
And God, we ask your blessing upon every, every listener, God. And we're praying, God, for growth. We're praying for a building. We're praying for your will to be done. Whatever you decide, that's what we want. In Jesus' name.